Hey, what's up guys? Will here for GSM Marina. This is the Nokia 6.2, a new mid-range phone with HMD's Nokia brand. We've seen some stellar devices from Nokia in the past, but you need more than just nostalgia to be competitive these days. Does the 6.2 have what it takes? Let's find out in our full review. The Nokia 6.2 brings a sleek and elegant design that really catches the eye. The glass panels on the front and back are flat and mirror-like, and the ice finish complements the grey composite frame. The back looks quite symmetrical, with the round camera bump and fingerprint sensor aligned dead center, and I like the chrome highlights you can see here and there. Back in the day, Nokia phones were known for their sturdiness, and the Nokia 6.2 doesn't seem fragile, though I wouldn't want to put that to the test. You should keep the phone away from water if you can as well, since there is no IP rated water resistance. The 6.3 inch IPS LCD screen is actually the same as the Nokia 7.2's. In fact, both of these phones are identical in shape, size, and weight, but the 6.2 has a different chipset and main camera. But before we get into those, let's talk more about the display. With this 1080p resolution, it's decently sharp, and brightness is good over 500 nits maximum with the slider, and with a boost to 580 in auto mode in bright conditions. Blacks are pretty deep, though not as much as an OLED panel, and colors are fairly accurate. You can also turn on an auto white balance feature, which will adjust the display according to the ambient light. One neat feature shared with the Nokia 7.2 was the notification LED, which sits within the power button. There is also a sort of ambient display, which will wake up the screen briefly to show you new notifications. You can also wake up and check the phone with a rear-mounted fingerprint reader, which is quite reliable. Although there are two cutouts on the bottom of the phone, they're connected to one single speaker. Audio quality is fine, but nothing special. Loudness is decent, but highs are muffled and there's hardly any bass. There is a 3.5mm jack for headphones, and quality with them plugged in is good. Loudness isn't great though, so you may run into problems using high impedance headphones. There are multiple storage options for 32, 64, or 128 gigabytes on board. 32 may seem too small these days, but at least the storage is expandable through microSD. At the heart of the Nokia 6.2 was a Snapdragon 636 chipset and 3 or 4 gigs of RAM. For a new mid-range phone, it's an odd choice by Nokia to include an older chipset like this one. Performance isn't bad, it's consistent, and you don't get any heating or throttling. But compared to other current mid-rangers, the Nokia 6.2 sits at the bottom of the benchmark charts, and in the future, this gap will just increase even more. And unfortunately, the news isn't much better when it comes to battery life. The Nokia 6.2's 3500mAh battery scored an endurance rating of 73 hours in our tests, well below average for a mid-ranger these days. When plugged in with a bundled 10 watt charger, the Nokia 6.2 is able to charge from 0 to 35% in half an hour, nothing special and a faster charger is not supported. At least with the Nokia 6.2, you get stock Android, and since it's part of the Android One program, you can expect timely security updates. Ours is still running Android Pie, however, not the latest Android 10. Navigation is done in the pill-based style. Sliding the pill to the right takes you to the task switcher. Flicking it to the right switches you between your most recent apps. Pressing the arrow goes back, and tapping the pill takes you home. Everything feels quite fast and fluid and bloat-free. And as you'd expect, basically all of the functions are handled by Google's apps. Moving on to the Nokia 6.2's triple camera setup. There's a 16 megapixel main camera, an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle cam, and a depth sensor for portrait mode. In daylight, the image quality from the main camera is unimpressive. There is a decent amount of detail, but plenty of noise. Also, the white balance and the color reproduction are inconsistent, and the dynamic range is average at best. The ultra-wide cam is nothing great either. Photos are rather soft and have a yellowish color cast. The level of detail is nothing to write home about and neither is the dynamic range. In contrast, portrait shots generally come out okay, with decent subject isolation even with fairly complex scenes. They are a bit soft though. Now onto low light. Photos taken with the main cam are rather poor. They lack detail and there's excessive noise and washed out colors. All the highlights are blown out too. If you switch on night mode, you get an overall nicer result, though each photo takes several seconds to process when shooting. You get some restoration in the highlights, and color saturation is improved, though you still get plenty of noise. Low light shots out of the ultra wide camera are basically unusable. They're full of noise, there's a little detail, and the colors are washed out too. 
Night Mode smears away the noise altogether with all of the fine details, but restores the color saturation. Let's talk about selfies, which are taken with an 8 megapixel front facing camera. Unfortunately, this gives some of the worst results we've seen lately as far as selfies go. Focus appears to be fixed at infinity, so no matter how you hold the phone, your face comes out blurry. The Nokia 6.2 records video in up to 4K with this main cam, and the maximum frame rate is 30 FPS. 4K footage contains a lot of detail, but it's also quite noisy. The colors are accurate though, and the dynamic range is good. The ultra wide angle cam can shoot only in 1080p, and its videos have a color cast. The detail level is nothing special. Electronic stabilization is always on in the 1080p resolution with either camera. It does a decent job, but we've seen better elsewhere. So that's the Nokia 6.2. It's a good looking phone with a decent LCD screen and stock Android. There isn't that much more to say here. As far as the rest of the package goes, I really expected more from the 6.2 and it's tough to recommend. The outdated chipset, mediocre battery life, and poor overall camera performance make me wonder what was Nokia's game plan here. The Nokia 6.2 is going for 240 euros right now, and there are phones like the Galaxy A50 or the Mi A3 or others, which can offer you a lot more for the same price or even less. Thanks for watching guys, and see you next time.